Thank you, Craig. Um, so for this next part, we're going to have a panel discussion. So I want to call um, the rest of our future surveyors, uh, Malik Pilgrim, Tavon Foster, Dante Brown, and um, a few of our <coughs> players, um, TJ Frazier, Pat Simon, and Ray Butler. Employers who participated to talk about their experience. Um, a big part of our presentation today um, for us is uh, sort of a closeout. This is our last official um, activity that we're going to do with the future surveyors. Um, and uh, so it's kind of a closing uh, event for us, but it really is the beginning of 2018, and um, my job is to come around and, as I'll use Brian's terms, browbeat employers to get you to participate in this program. And you heard Craig talk about our need for some employers in Baltimore and in the city um, that can make it a little easier for young people to get there. So um, uh, we do have an interest form um, at the table up front that you can uh, sign up for. Um, being a host for an internship site, being a mentor, um, interviewing candidates for the program. Um, there's lots of different ways that you could be involved. And so we hope that this uh, presentation will um, get you excited about the program and um, how you can really help to grow uh, uh, the profession by getting uh, more young people involved and maybe a few more women. Um, yeah. So, um, so I'm going to ask some questions and just get these guys uh, going with, with, uh, with their thoughts. So my first question is really to everybody, employers, um, future surveyors. Um, were you, uh, well, let, let's start with the, with the future surveyors. Um, did you know about surveying before this program? And if not, um, what made you interested in getting involved? All right, so I didn't know anything about surveying at all. I'm not even gonna lie. So uh, what made me interested was when the job shadow was, this was what made me interested. We went there, um, Pat was talking to me about the history and was showing me the chains and then I talked to Jim about the 3D models. I really like the 3D models. It got me right into the rest of the technology and the history and like how many back, back then, who was served as. So it was just interesting. I didn't know what surveying was neither. I would see y'all on the side of the street with the guns and be like, what is they doing? Why is they just looking through the hole? What is they looking at? Is they looking at me? Am I being watched? Like, what is going on right now? But then when I seen it in the school, I was like, oh, all right, this looks kind of interesting. Let's see where this could lead me to. The other main part, like Manny said, is when we was in class, we got the sheet to show how much surveys make. And for me, that played a part in making the decision because when I get older, I want to help take care of my family. So if I can do this and get the money that it needs, then that's a good thing to me. Me, I knew a little bit about it because for the previous two summers before the, for this program, I did a little bit of a surveying with the um, city because I worked at the Department of Transportation, but it wasn't really enough to like tell me what it really was. So once I found out about the opportunity at the school, I took advantage of it. Um, and, and Craig, what about you? 
To the employers, um, I'd like to know what attracted you to the program? What made you sign up um, to participate? Um, I've, I've decided to participate for one is, is the, we've been talking about the average age of the um, surveyors is increasing and over my involvement with MSS, it's, you know, how do we get people into the profession is this is something that's been going on for, for years that we've recognized this need. So t to me, it was all about exposing people to the profession. The last uh, um, person I hired about a year ago, it was just an entry level position and, and it was actually secretary's son that we hired. And it was like, well, at his um, um, evaluation, three month evaluation, it was like, well, what did you what did you know about surveying before you got this job? And he said he thought that they were landscapers. So it's like you just saying, well, surveyors are people out there, you know, cutting grass. So to me, to get involved is just to show surveyors to the to the public because if they don't know, and as these guys have been saying in the presentations, it's like they don't know what surveyors are. There's they don't know it. So I really wanted to be a part of it, just to to increase that um, workforce, we need this, but you know, the, the, the people that aren't surveying don't have any idea what we do, and it's a great profession, and just to be a part of you know, bringing people into it. The reason I got involved, I think, was because it was a way to get back. Um, you know, I wouldn't be where I am today if it wasn't for the mentors in my past that helped me along the way and gave me opportunities and skills that they did to get me to the point where I could actually eventually get licensed and climb up through the ranks. And, uh, you know, I happen to love kids. I think they're, you know, awesome, especially this age and their, their future's ahead of them. And I, I feel like the best thing we can do in this industry is to you get to this level to, to to deal to get involved with this program so that we can reach these kids in high school and and what that does for us is it kind of gives us the opportunity you know so I have an intern and he learns about surveying and now he knows what it is and then he goes home and he tells his family and his cousins and everybody else and then you've getting you're getting a bigger and bigger you know pull that you can pull from for for the employers and people to bring in um, and just to get the word out there as to what we're about, you know, so that we're not a dying profession and that we are expanding. I know I learned um, a lot about surveying myself. Um, I'm kind of like Malik. Um, all I knew was the guys that I called a tripod that was outside and I thought they were tracking my speed and that I was going to get a ticket um, in the mail. So I would slow down every time I passed the surveyor um, on the road. But um, <laughs> as, as Matthew said, the right thing for the wrong reason. Um, but um, it was definitely a, a learning experience, um, I think, all the way around, is, you know, is what it sounds like. and. Um, we went into this from the Mayor's Office of Employment Development, um, thinking about um, we have an employer. Usually we're seeking the employer out and saying we have workers, we have people in the city that want to work. Um, can we help you meet your workforce needs? And it was the first time that we had employers coming to us saying, please help us figure this out. So we saw it as an opportunity and, you know, Brian, that didn't know, you know, really what he was getting himself into. Um, as we had a lot to prove by um, showing that we could meet some of your needs, um, as, as well as other employers. And so we certainly got what we were looking for out of the experience. And so I'm curious to see um, if you got what you were looking for um, when you when you signed up. And I have to say, we did talk to youth and say, how should we? present this, what should we put on our flyers to get young people interested in coming out to our initial presentation? And they said, show the technology, show how much surveyors get paid, and that you can get paid while you're in your internship. And we had over 60 something students come out on their own to hear our initial presentation. So um, you, you heard about surveying, you came out to the presentation, you guys made it all the way through. Did you get what you were looking for? Yeah, what I wanted from this program mainly was uh, another pathway and where I can go with 
my occupation in the future because all I know before this internship was I wanted to do engineering, engineering, engineering. Engineering is a broad term for what you can really do. So when I heard about this, I was like, I want to take this opportunity to walk down this pathway to see if this is actually something I want to do in my future. And from this, I learned like, this is an opportunity for me and if I stick with it, I can really become something and enjoy what I'm doing with it. I mean, I did, like, at first, I didn't really know what Servan was. Like, this internship gave it an opportunity to get a better understanding and a more clear view of, like, what they do. And, like, now, it's something I can really see myself doing for the rest of my life as a career. Um, yes, I uh, got exactly what I was looking for. Um, just a new experience, you know, um, getting out of your cuffer zone, because I, I didn't know nothing about Servan, so. And I was just like, at this age, I didn't know what I wanted to be or what I wanted to do. But when I started, you know, uh, job shadowing and at the internship, I had something I really like to do, something I really love. So, yeah. I'm going to ask this next question um, directly to TJ. Um, TJ, you were there from day one, um, and, and you. Uh, helped us to learn a little bit more about um, surveying and again was just you know looking for an opportunity to uh, introduce more young people to the field um, we had weekly phone calls we had uh, things that we changed along the way we had a couple of bumps in the road um, what made you stick with this program from walking in that first day um, to where we are today uh, let me just quickly start by saying, uh, since my circumstances have changed, um, I'm not here in any way on behalf of the licensing board, um, just representing my experience. Uh, uh, DLLR, the license board, was not directly involved in this program. This was an MSS effort. Uh, that may or may not change in the future, I don't know. Uh, Obviously, being involved, uh, as it happened, this initiative came up while I was president, and um, I kind of jumped on it. I thought it was a good thing, and uh, we, we reached out a couple of times, like Brian said, and we got an instant response, and uh, I think the program was successful. Uh, I will reiterate, you know, Brian's uh, mentioned earlier, Angel and Meg were a terrific help. Uh, they really did a lot of the heavy lifting here. Uh, I think the lesson for us is that um, the interest is there, the response is there. As I've told a couple of the chapter chairs, please do reach out, uh, but when you do, be ready to do something because you're likely to get a response, um, and then the ball's back in your court to actually perform, um, to line up participants, as we've been talking about. Um, so I, th I think it's a worthwhile program. Uh, I think, I don't know for sure, but I think we're kind of out in front on this, um, across the country possibly. I'm not aware of any other program that has gone as far as we have. Um, so I think it's a great thing, and I think it's been successful. So I think it's worth continuing and expanding. So. So, um, so this is for, for any of you. Um, I want to hear about the most exciting or most memorable part of being a part of the Future Surveyors program for you. Um, my, I give you the most memorable thing is, I'm going to ask a question. If I tell you the number and you repeat it to me, what's the last thing you say after you repeat it to me? Check, check. If y'all don't know that, y'all not surveyors. That's all I hear every day. Check, 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 check. That's my most memorable thing right there. You can only remember that. Like, and I started hearing it, I was like, why do they just keep saying check? What is that? What are y'all checking? Hold up. Then I just, I'm, now, y'all you hear is check, check out my mouth. Um, I, you learn a lot here. So it, it's a lot of memories that you're going to have. 
I learned a different math style. It's not just regular inches now. It's a tenth of an inch. And you 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 doing different things. So, but the most memorable thing is check check because it, it, that, that's something that changed me. Um, I've been in surveying for a million years and the, forget what it was like to, to first start and as these guys have mentioned that it's uh, you know all new to them but um, I had the pleasure of, of having Dante as our intern and the one thing that will really stand out is he was in the field I had him for the shadowing but I didn't see him day in and day out he was with the different crews but it was like what did you like best about you know surveying what would you say that it was well all right so i guess it one day i didn't have one like the right shoes and went to a tunnel and went out that way <laughs> <laughs> So I like to open up the bad holes, uh, get the inverts. Um, open bad holes was fun. Stopping the traffic, definitely. You know, who don't want to stop traffic? Like, who wouldn't want to do that? Like, I always want to do that. But it was most memorable part was all right. So I, I'm gonna finish telling the story. I was telling that first, but I had on the wrong shoes and we went to the tunnel. I tried to jump over the rock, slid, fell all in the water. I was left for the whole day, man. Oh, man. Socks was wet, pants was wet. I was not feeling that at all. Not at all. But yeah, that was most memorable. But definitely stopping traffic, opening my homes, getting inverts, um, measuring the sewers uh, from top to bottom. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. I just want to add, like, how many of you out there really enjoy getting in, getting inverts? <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, uh, so um, Craig and Mandy had an opportunity to talk to us about how we can improve the program um, and make it better. Um, and uh, I'm I'm a data geek, and so I always like to ask questions. And um, now I'm sort of putting you guys in an impromptu focus group. Um, so I want to know uh, from you, uh, where would you like to see one improvement um, to make this better, either from the employer side or from the youth side? I think for me, um, I think in the program, we need to add some maybe classes on teaching the young people how to come into that type of an environment and to do you know and to divide home life or friend life and and not I'm not saying I'm saying like how you present yourself and and what your responsibilities are you know I'd like to see that beefed up a little bit um, you know you're not talking to your friends or you're not dealing with you know peers and that and so just just kind of understand um, the professionalism on a level um, I mean, I think that would be the only thing. Everything else I felt like was really good and, and well thought out. I would say like they had more shadow days before the actual start of the program because like you can't really base your decision off of two shadow days because like for me mainly, the office, I was only in the office for one day and then the field for one day and like just out of two one. days, you, like you rather would do more. So that's what I see more shadow. And, uh, Go off of that, I would say allow the students to choose what side they want to work on because maybe not everybody that wants to add to the meeting, they saw that you could do work on a computer. Some of them don't always want to be in the field. So to get even more interns, maybe you could have it where some can only sit inside and some can do outside. For me, I would definitely see more study days. That would be very helpful. Was uh, yeah, that test was was, was the one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We didn't know we could bring our notes. So I mean, I know most of y'all knew y'all could bring your notes, but yeah, test did me. <laughs> Uh, 
Um, so uh, I, I mentioned when we when I first came up here that um, this is the the last formal thing that we'll do, um, but. Um, we have um, a, a goal that each of the future surveyors um, will leave the program with a job um, and or in school focused on um, a survey related field. And as of right now, um, we started with six um, uh, students. We finished with five, uh, three are either working full time or working part time or have a relationship and we still have two um, who are uh, eager um, and anxious to work, um, as you can hear. And so um, while I have them up here, and while I have your attention, I'm gonna um, ask uh, Dante and Tavon to give their uh, little uh, pitch to employers out there who might be looking to bring on a, a new Rodman. Um, I know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> Why, why they should hire you, so, okay. So, so y'all listening? Like, I need y'all listening. Listen very closely, get real close. Um, you should hire me, I am because I'm eager to learn, determined, outgoing, willing to learn new things. I love being outside, you know, dealing with different technology, different difficulties and obstacles that you have to face. Um, work with people very well, get along with them very well. Also a team leader, also I can be a leader. So, yeah, that's um, basically much about it. And Pat, with a, with a, a, is a reference up here, so you can see him afterwards if you want to vouch for what Dante just said. For me, well, I'm open minded and I'm willing to learn new things. And, like, I'll finish what I start, no matter what, I'm hard working. Like, just a dependable person. So. That's good. That's good. All right. Statistics. Um, we uh, we had six slots, and so um, we really we needed to fill um, those uh, six internship positions. We had our initial uh, presentation at the school. We had um, over 60 students to come out and to learn more about surveying. So um, I know that Brian and TJ said one of their goals was just more exposure um, for the field of surveying. And so all of the students in that um, room and the, the, the new ambassadors that you have um, here today, um, we, I think we've accomplished that goal. Um, we uh, enrolled um, six students and um, another student uh, got a job in the middle of the program and he needed to work. Um, and uh, you know, the same bird in hand, he's two in the bush, and so he had to take that opportunity. But we did complete five. Um, we did set out a goal to have all of the students to um, pass the CST uh, level one exam. Um, we have a little bit of work to do there, so that's something that we'll work on um, in future iterations of the program. Um, and then we wanted um, for each of the graduates to um, have a, a job or to be in a survey um, related field of study in school and so um, Craig as you heard is working full time um, with PMI um, Malik is working part time at Century Engineering and part time um, in school uh, Manny is enrolled full time in school and will be working with Wallace Montgomery um, in between semesters and you heard that we have two um, trained and ready uh, uh, guys to go, Tavon Foster um, 
and Dante Brown. So um, please feel free to um, introduce yourselves to them um, after this if you're um, looking to hire. Um, Meg talked a little bit about some of the lessons that we learned. Um, and, and I'm sure there are things that wouldn't be a surprise to you. Um, we have some logistical things to work through um, to make the program stronger um, for you um, as employers from um, the logistics around the, uh, the transportation to how we manage um, some of the financial aspects of the program. So we'll be working on that. Um, we really heard um, everybody that we talked to um, uh, speak to this need to bring more young people into the field. And so again, not a surprise to you, but it's something that, um, that we in our capacity and in our partnership with Urban Alliance um, will be uh, really focused on on your behalf. Um, uh, an, an important thing that I don't think we got a chance to talk about is how different um, the reality for uh, for your industry is uh, from what's in the labor market data. When we as uh, program people decide where we're going to build new programs and new trainings, we go to uh, labor market statistics to see um, what fields uh, are expected to grow and um, how uh, many people they're hiring annually. And um, we looked at that data before we met with Brian and TJ and it didn't seem like you guys were having an issue um, at all. And so it wasn't on anybody's radar. So I think um, it was definitely important to have um, you guys reach out and say, you know, here's what we need um, because um, when, when we heard from you, we were able to just do a quick search for jobs and we saw that there were just a number of job openings around the region. And so um, just want to encourage you, um, if uh, this is a challenge that you're having in your, your uh, uh, place of business to, to be a part of this. Um, we, we learned a lot from the young people. They obviously see this as an excellent opportunity, especially for um, students who are not um, college bound to be able to graduate high school um, and go into an entry level role in a career that has um, tremendous opportunity for growth, um, that has high job satisfaction um, and a good salary. So you have a lot going for you that um, would really make young people um, and women um, interested <laughs> um, in being a surveyor. So want to um, point that out. And then um, the, the last piece is that um, the exposure really made a, a difference. Um, and a couple of the guys talked about that from the job shadowing to having the technology and the tools there, that initial presentation, um, even at their orientation, um, uh, we brought in tools and gave them an opportunity to engage with them. And every step of the way, we checked in, and, you know, what do you like about what's happening and what don't you like? And they said, having a chance to see the tools and to touch them, you know, they're very expensive, but it helps them to see themselves as surveyors and help them feel like it's something that they can do. Um, on, on the policy side, you know, we're a government agency. Um, we have talked about this uh, pilot with other employer groups who are dealing with similar challenges from manufacturing. These people don't know that there actually are a lot of manufacturing jobs in the Baltimore region um, that also pay well. Um, um, textiles that, um, that they really uh, saw this as a model that can be used in other areas. And so um, as Urban Alliance takes this on, Mayor's office um, will be um, involved in making sure that, um, that it is a, a warm transition and we can um, leverage any of our uh, resources to help uh, keep the program strong. But we are looking at how can we take this model that we did with you and take it to, to different industries. So we really have you to thank uh, for that, for really um, working with us and telling us what you need and what would work and what wouldn't work for you which is what helped this program to be a success. Um, uh, again, um, we're going to transition this program to Urban Lions. Um, Stephanie uh, is here. She's the executive director. And I'd like you to just stand up and let people see who you are.
Southern Lions were actually very involved from the beginning. Um, they were there at the initial presentation, helping us to shepherd the young people um, through the different um, demonstrations. Um, they provided job readiness and they will really be beefing that piece up um, as the program continues. Um, they did financial um, counseling, so they've been involved um, along the way in this program, so this is not you know, just sort of turning it over to somebody who doesn't know anything about what's been going on. Um, the last thing I'll say is that um, we do have some materials. We have um, an a, a overview of the program and the different components that you've heard about. We have a map of the career um, pathways on the office side and um, the um, field side, um, so if you wanted to see that. And then, again, we have the interest form that we really hope that we have some, some of you who will be willing to um, participate in various ways. Um, so we'd like you to come over um, and sign up. And um, that's it. Um, thank you guys for your attention. Thank you for working with us. and Meg and um, thank you Brian um, congratulations to our interns and you've done a great job let's give them a hand just a few things before we head out to our, our afternoon sessions um, first I want to introduce uh, dignitaries surrounding state presidents um, we have with us Sahid Smith, President of Pennsylvania Society of Surveyors. Is he here? And if so, please stand. No? Um, Ed Dodd and his wife Tracy, President of Virginia Association of Surveyors. And Lee Schneider and his wife Heather are um, President-elect, I think. Uh, from West Virginia. Are they not here? Okay. <laughs> and then also, Patty Ann brought to my attention that we have a group of young people here mm -hmm. in our um, midst that is, is, they are from Puerto Rico and they attended the University of Puerto Rico. They are in, um, I guess it's a dual uh, licensure or a dual program between engineering and surveying. I understand two of them are licensed engineers. Um, I was told that there are seven of them in all that are all seeking their surveying license. Four of them are full-time employees at SHA and three at Dewberry. If you wouldn't mind standing. Let's so as a reminder, we have tech time in the exhibit hall with refreshments from 3.30 to, or I think that's 3 to 4.30. Uh, PM. There's also information um, in your packet for CPCs at your table. Make sure you sign, fill out your uh, sheets, and turn those in at the back of the room with somebody from MSS. Um, and and uh, finally, um, please stay with us tonight. I know a lot of people left. We had a, a team building event last night that just was amazing. Um, we had heavy hors d'oeuvres served before we did the team building event and some more food afterwards. Tonight's event will be um, a dinner buffet, a hot dinner buffet. So we hope you guys can join us for a fun reception at a casino night and just hang out with the rest of us here at MSS. Thank you.